Hello friends, once again welcome back to the automotive basic session. I am Somshaker and back with the fault confinement concept of a CAN protocol. In this video, we are going to learn mainly the four things. Coming to the first one, what is fault confinement and the need of fault confinement or why do we need fault confinement in our CAN network. The third one is the objectives of the fault confinement and the fourth question, fourth question is what is transmit error counter and receive error counter or also call it as a TEC and REC. So let's start with the first question. What is fault confinement? We can define fault confinement as a it is a mechanism to prevent a defective node from troubling the old functioning of the system. Coming to the second one, why do we need fault confinement? As I already said in my first question, the defective node troubling a a defective node is troubling the functioning of the system. So what will happen because of this defective node or the defective node may send error frame repetitively over CAN bus. In order to prevent this repetitive sending of error frame over CAN bus we need a fault confinement mechanism in our CAN network. Now we will understand or we will see the objectives of the fault confinement. There are mainly two objectives of fault confinement. Coming to the first one, detection of permanent hardware dysfunctioning of the CAN node. The second fault, the second objective of the fault confinement is after detecting switching off of this defective node. Now you may ask how these two objectives are accomplished in a CAN network. Let me tell you the objectives I mean Detection of permanent hardware dysfunctioning and switching off of the defective nodes are achieved with the help of transmit error counter and receive error counter counter values of a CAN node. Friends, again you may ask what are these transmit error counter and receive error counter and this is our fourth question as well. As you can see the same in this slide. It is simple the transmit error counter means the counter which keeps the tracking of successful and unsuccessful transmission and based on the successful and unsuccessful transmission the transmit error counter or TEC will be incremented and decremented. What is the need of keeping the tracking of this counter values the successful transmission or unsuccessful transmission this we are going to learn in our next video no need to worry at all here. Now coming to the receive error counter or REC means the counter which keeps the tracking of successful and unsuccessful reception and based on the successful and unsuccessful reception the REC or receive error counter will be incremented and decremented. Friends any node which is connected to the CAN network will be in one of the three states such as error active, error passive and bus off based on these transmit and receive error counter values. So what is the counter value for error active state and what is the counter value for error passive state and what is the counter value for bus up state we will be discussing in our next video. Friend, this is just a short notes about uh, the four questions what we have discussed in this video. Fault confinement it is a mechanism to prevent a defective node from troubling the old function of the system. The second question, why do we need fault confinement in order to prevent repetitive sending of error frames in a over a CAN bus. The third question was objectives of the fault confinement as I already said to detect permanent hardware dysfunctioning of a CAN node and the second one is switching off of the defective node as the same you can see in this slide and the, the last question was what is transmit error count and receive error counters the definition for transmit error counter and receive error count you can see in this slide. For queries please leave comments below if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel secrets of automotive industry and hit thumbs up. Thank you all.